All right, if you're moving to the Portland area and maybe done a little bit of Google searching, you know, you probably have gotten quite a bit of information about what Portland is all about, the food scene, the parks, all that great stuff. But we want to talk about the suburbs, uh, which a lot of people who are moving here um, are, you know, going to end up actually living in. So in this video, we're going to talk about the suburbs in Washington County, which really makes up uh, the west side and southwest side of the Portland metro area, kind of this tri-county area um, that Portland sits right in the middle of. So we're going to talk about Beaverton, we're going to talk about Hillsboro, Tigard, Tualatin, and Sherwood. We're getting into that right now. Hey, what's up everybody? This is Paul Clem with the Home Team Brokers coming to you from Portland, Oregon. If this is your first time to the channel living in Oregon, hit the subscribe button, tap the little bell to make sure you get notified when we drop a new video. Uh, people reach out to us all the time who are relocating here and we love to hear from you. So if that's you, give us a call, send us a text, shoot us an email, or schedule a Zoom call in the description below. However you decide to get a hold of us, we would love to talk to you about your home search. Okay, so in this video, we're talking about Washington County suburbs. Um, this is primarily the west side and southwest side of the Portland metro area. There's some great places in here. There's really kind of something for everybody. There is like complete suburbia. You can get some more rural type living um, and you can get some areas that feel a little bit more urban. So uh, I do want to note that uh, I was going through Tigard. Some of my footage got messed up, so I just did a little quick voiceover. We're going to have a lot more videos on each of these suburbs individually, Tigard included. So um, I'm not gonna hold you up anymore. Let's get right into it. All right, we're going through Beaverton now. Beaverton, Oregon really has it all. Um, it, it's probably uh, amongst the most sought after uh, suburbs of Portland. Um, there's a lot of quote unquote suburbia you know, there's a lot of like newer developments and very well planned neighborhoods and communities. And then you have um, some areas that are more of kind of an urban feel. Uh, there's about 100,000 people in Beaverton. Um, I believe it's the seventh largest city uh, in the state, uh, but it's uh, 20 square miles, um, maybe a little bit over that. So, you know, Beaverton is huge and you have um, Portland kind of directly to the east. Um, and then you have Hillsboro out to the west. Um, north of Beaverton, uh, you have kind of some unincorporated Washington County, uh, which some of those areas are more or less considered to be Beaverton, and then it bumps up into um, kind of the, the Portland border um, as well, up uh, into the West Hills. And then south of Beaverton, you have Tigard, um, so, which, which is another great suburb that we're gonna check out. So. Um, there's a huge footprint geographically that Beaverton has. There's a lot of very distinct areas. Um, and I mean, some of the older areas, I mean, one of the bigger things about Beaverton to mention is some of these older areas are really starting to turn over. Uh, so you have like downtown Beaverton, for example, we're gonna go walk around there. You have a lot of uh, really awesome restaurants and bars and things like that. You know, and even, you know, five, 10 years ago, the area seemed a little more run down. Um, uh, so Beaverton has six different public high schools. There's several different private schools as well. Um, so, you know, a lot of people live here. There are a lot of families. Beaverton is probably one of the more sought after areas in particular for people who are relocating to the Portland metro area. If you don't want to be in Portland, but you want to be close, uh, maybe pay a little bit lower, uh, a little, little bit less in, in property taxes, Beaverton is gonna be a, a, a really good option for you. And, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of jobs, a, a lot of companies um, headquartered in Beaverton. You have like uh, Nike, the world headquarters is here. Obviously, you know, that's kind of the, the biggest driver, uh, but you have like Tektronix, um, you have parts of Intel operating in Beaverton. You have Columbia Sportswear. Um, so there's a lot of tech, a lot of apparel, a lot of um, you know computer hardware. Uh, Leupold and Stevens is here. Uh, I think they make um, like uh, military equipment. So you know there, there's a lot of economic opportunity in Beaverton. Um, you know it's it it's really kind of considered Portland, um, like a lot of the suburbs that we're looking at. Uh, but you know. 
it, it really constitutes or kind of makes up the entirety of the west side. So Portland proper, you have northwest and southwest, but then, you know, the further west of, of that city limit that you go, you get right into Beaverton. So it's a very natural extension uh, into these areas. So uh, let's, uh, let's go take a look. Let's go check out some Beaverton. So this downtown area of Beaverton has really turned over a lot in recent years. There's a lot of awesome restaurants. Um, and it's just a place that's really like any night of the week, you know, there's people out and about getting dinner, hanging out, having a good time. I mean, it's, it's becoming a, uh, a much better place for, I think, uh, younger people. Uh, but it's also very family friendly because, you know, there are, there is a really high concentration of, you know, families and people with kids in the Beaverton area and this downtown area, um, you know, really, really caters to everybody. So Beaverton has, 13 very distinct neighborhoods um, some have kind of an older uh, feel you know where you have like some you know nearly hundred year old homes and kind of craftsman style homes and some of the bungalows that you find in the Portland area um, there's a lot of neighborhoods that are um, you know have a lot of mid-century homes over the course of decades you know Beaverton has just you know continued to develop so you have you know homes built in the 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, and a lot of new construction as well. So uh, we're gonna go drive around, check out some of these neighborhoods, see what they look like. So there is so much to do in Beaverton. You know, we talked about some of the restaurants and bars and things like that, but there are parks everywhere, surrounded by green spaces. You have uh, one of the best farmer's markets in the Portland area that's right downtown Beaverton. Um, another great thing about Beaverton too is you have the Max Line uh, that runs right through um, the entire town. So. You know, the MAX is the light rail here in the Portland metro area, and there are uh, park and rides, so you can go park in a lot, hop on the MAX, get downtown, whether you're commuting for work, um, or maybe you just wanna get downtown Portland and, you know, go check out an event, go catch a Blazer game, go to a brewery, you know, there's obviously, uh, you know, no end to uh, how many things there are to do, but, um, yeah, Beaverton is, uh, you know, really, really set up nicely and has a ton of great amenities. Um, there are uh, a lot of different neighborhoods that that offer kind of, you know, different landscapes, different age and style of homes. Um, but really anywhere you're at in Beaverton, you can kind of take advantage of everything that the area has to offer. Uh, another awesome thing about Beaverton is the uh, THPRD, the uh, Tualatin Valley Hills, uh, Twelton Valley Hills, TH, Twelton Hills Valley Parks and Rec. Um, yeah, it's a mouthful, but there are rec centers everywhere, um, you know, which have gyms and basketball courts and um, soccer fields and, all, you know, all kinds of stuff. Uh, but one of the great things that they offer are classes for kids. So I know we've had, um, you know, our daughter in a, in a ton of these classes where, you know, you can pay like, like 50 bucks for, a six week or eight week class and it could be like an art class could be a gymnastics class there's music classes there's soccer um so uh a, really a great deal and if you're not doing daycare full time um you know something that's a good kind of stop gap is implementing some of these classes where you know again it's like five bucks a class is what it comes out to so it's really good deal uh right now we're in the cedar mill area which is more kind of laid back up in the West Hills. So you have, um, you know, kind of the West Hills that, that border Portland um, and Beaverton or Multnomah County and Washington County. Uh, and, you know, on, on kind of the, the Western, the, kind of the South, Southwestern facing slope of the West Hills is where you start to get into Beaverton. And there's a lot of great communities up this way. Like I said, we're in Cedar Mill, which is close to Cedar Hills, close to a lot of shopping, um, great restaurants, things like that. But you also can get into uh, like Bethany, um, Oak Hills. Uh, there, there's, a, there's a lot of really sought after neighborhoods um, in this area overall. And you can kind of see why. I mean, you know, they're, they're newer communities for the most part. So, you know, they have sidewalks. 
Um, there's, uh, oh, somebody right there from the city. How we doing? Um, yeah, nice, nice sidewalks. It's a little more hilly, um, so there's a little more character to the neighborhoods overall up in this area. Um, you do get some HOAs, um, but you know you're you're kind of paying for the maintenance and upkeep of these neighborhoods, the parks, things like that. So, you know, it's uh, and they're and they're typically not more than oh, you know, a couple hundred bucks a year. So it's nothing crazy, uh, but. This is probably my favorite part of Beaverton. Um, when you start to get into Bethany and uh, some other areas that are really kind of at the far northwest tip, you actually get into unincorporated Washington County. Um, so taxes might be a little lower, uh, but the property values are higher. Um, so, you know, these are communities where there's a little bit of a higher concentration of wealth, typically, if you kind of look at the statistics. Um, unincorporated Washington County in this northwest Washington County area, um, if you look at the median sale price in the last 12 months, it's actually something like $750,000. Um, Beaverton overall is about $515,000. So you can see, um, you know, kind of what you're getting and why there's a, you know, almost $200,000 discrepancy in home values because these areas are just overall a little more sought after um, and, you know, maybe a little nicer depending on what you want to call nice, but I love it up here. Okay, I'm driving up through Bethany in. Uh, around Beaverton, uh, you gotta check this out. <clears throat> well, there's Beaverton for you. Um, just a quick glimpse. We're gonna do a lot more videos about this area and really dig into these neighborhoods, but Beaverton's great, um, you know, for work, for play, Proximity to Portland home values are slightly less than uh, Portland proper Although you can get up into the hills and get into some pretty expensive areas a lot of new construction a lot of older homes mid-century modern Kind of everything, uh, you know, you, you could want and options for everybody. So let, let's go check out Hillsboro All right, we're out in Hillsboro now, which is kind of the furthest west you can get in the Portland metro area. Um, to the north, you have really just rural areas like North Plains, Helvetia. Uh, to the south, uh, you have to kind of go through some rural areas to get to like a Sherwood, for example, um, and you kind of start touching wine country a little bit. Uh, and then to the east, you have Beaverton. And so Beaverton and Hillsboro uh, really kind of um, seamlessly blend together um, for the most part. Um, in between Beaverton and Hillsboro, you have uh, an area called Tannisborn. And Tannisborn is unincorporated Washington County. I think it's mostly considered to be Hillsboro, but you know, that far edge of Beaverton really, you know, bumps up into it. But Tannisborn is really cool. Uh, a lot of shopping. Um, I think kind of the, the anchor point for Tannisborn is the streets of Tannisborn, which is an open air mall um, with a lot of great shops. They have a Macy's, you know, so um, there, there's a lot to, you know, there's a lot that's in that area, but then as you get further west into Hillsboro, you start getting into um, some Hillsboro neighborhoods, um, which, you know, I, th I think there's about 10 different, you know, distinct areas or neighborhoods of Hillsboro. Um, the median sale price uh, uh, as of now, early 2022, um, is about $450,000, um, which is well below uh, the Portland metro area. So, Hillsboro is further from downtown Portland. You're looking at, you know, maybe 30, 45 minutes if there's some traffic. Um, but it's a really nice area with really well-planned communities um, and there's a ton of jobs. Um, Intel, you know, most notably is here in Hillsboro, but you have like Salesforce. Um, I think Tektronix has offices out here. Um, there's a lot of tech jobs in particular in software and then of course, in more hardware when you talk about Intel, but um, when you hear the term Silicon Forest um, kind of referred to the Portland metro area or Portland, this is what we're talking about. The majority of these jobs, some in Beaverton, mostly in Hillsboro. So um, 
the cost of living, the home prices in particular, relative to the abundance of pretty good paying jobs, makes it one of the most affordable places to live in the Portland metro area. And Beaverton, I'm sorry, we're not Beaverton anymore. Hillsboro is uh, kind of known for its uh, developments. You know, you, you have uh, kind of the benefit of hindsight uh, you know, when you're building a new development and a lot of Hillsboro is newer development over the past, you know, 15, 20 years. So the area is growing a lot. Um, it, again, it's kind of known and heralded for uh, how well the communities are planned and the different neighborhoods that are being built. Um, and there are some older areas too. So Hillsboro has been around for a long time. The actual old town and downtown area is kind of way out at the furthest west point um, that you can get to uh, in Hillsboro, and you know it feels like you're in small town USA when you're there. But um, kind of the expanse of Hillsboro, um, you know, it, you, you have again a lot of lot of newer development and a lot of different kind of landscapes uh, and offerings. You have um, new construction areas like Aranco Station, uh, you know, where homes are really kind of packed in there. Um, and then you have kind of these rural areas surrounding where you can get more land. For example, there's wineries, farmers markets, um, you know, all the great things that a lot of areas throughout the Portland metro area have to offer. You can get all right here in Hillsboro. So let's go check it out. Next, we're driving through Tigard. Um, you're actually just hearing a voiceover right now because um, the footage of me talking in my car uh, when I was in Tigard um, got deleted <laughs> for somehow. So uh, just doing a little voiceover here. Um, Tigard is a great suburb. It's probably a little bit underrated. Um, you know, it's maybe a little bit overshadowed by um, Beaverton to the north. Um, and, and then it also has Tualatin to the south. You have Lake Oswego directly to the east, um, but you get a lot of great neighborhoods, a lot of great amenities in Tigard. It's probably not um, as known for like its food and bars and nightlife and things like that. Although downtown Tigard, which we're gonna see some footage of here driving through, is kind of up and coming. There are new restaurants there. There's a place called Tigard Tap House, which is awesome. Um, it's a great place for families. It's, I feel like every time I go there, there's, you know, like 10 other families with toddlers and babies and things like that. So um, it's it's a great place. Um, Tigard is um, a little bit more affordable, a little bit more attainable. Um, it seems like across the board, average um, or rather medium sales price, $566,000. Um, so you have a, a lot of reasonably priced homes. Um, you also have Bull Mountain, um, which is kind of the 
the crown jewel of Tigard. Um, you know, a, a lot of very big, very expensive homes. It, it's up on the hill, so you get some good views. It's very wooded, very forested. So it's it's a it's a really nice area to live and definitely one of the more desirable um, or sought after neighborhoods probably in all of the Portland metro area. Uh, but Tigard itself has 13 kind of distinct standalone neighborhoods um, where you get new construction, you get a lot of mid-century homes, um, you get builds from like the 80s, 90s, early 2000s. There are some older areas where you have homes built like in the 30s and 40s, but that's not going to be as common. Um, you know, this is an area that probably from the 1950s on really started to develop quite a bit you know like a lot of the portland metro area there's one public high school tigard high school there are some private schools west side christian is in tigard um, uh, which i know is um, a, a, a pretty popular uh, private high school in the portland metro area um, but you have areas like, you know, this downtown area of Tigard, which again is a little more up and coming. Uh, you have like the Walnut area, again, Bull Mountain. You have Washington Square, which is kind of like the preeminent uh, mall, probably like classic traditional mall um, in the Portland metro area. I know retail has kind of taken a beating in recent years. Some malls around Portland, um, you know, aren't doing so hot, but you go to Washington Square, it's it's pretty thriving. Um, so Washington Square is great. You also have King City kind of on the south side of town. Um, and Tigard is really uh, kind of anchored by um, Highway 99. So Highway 99 runs directly through Tigard. Um, and then if you keep going down Highway 99, you're going to get uh, into some areas of Tualatin and then you're going to get to Sherwood, then you're going to get uh, to Newburgh and then you're going to get into wine country. So, you know, Tigard is accessible if you're getting to like wine country or like Lincoln City, for example, is a pretty straight shot. But Tigard is a little bit harder um, in terms of its proximity to I-5. Uh, Highway 99 can get really backed up, so traffic can get bad. It's a little bit harder to kind of get downtown Portland and to get into some other areas. Um, so it's uh, it does get a little bit bottlenecked, um, you know, and that is one of the downsides for sure of Tigard. Um, you have a lot of business parks in Tigard, so there are a lot of local businesses and regional businesses and businesses that are headquartered in Tigard. Um, you know, Capital One has offices there. Uh, the PERS, the Oregon uh, Public Retirement System, is there headquartered in Tigard. The RMLS, um, the Regional Multiple Listing Service that all us realtors use in uh in Oregon is their headquartered in Tigard. So um, you do get kind of a good mix of commercial and residential. It's the 12th largest city in Oregon. There's 53,000 people. Um, it's about 12 square miles. Um, and I think overall, again, I, you know, Tigard does tend to be a little bit overlooked. And if you're somebody who's relocating to the Portland area, um, you know, Tigard is, uh, again, maybe, again, not as accessible to like downtown Portland, but it is super close. And, you know, it bumps up into southwest Portland on the northern side. So, you know, depending on time of day, you can get up Highway 99 into southwest Portland and into downtown Portland, um, you know, maybe in 15 minutes. So kind of depends on what neighborhood you live in and everything. But yeah, no, uh, I think Tigard's an awesome place to live and definitely worth uh, considering in your home search. Rolling through Tualatin right now. The sun has broken. It's a beautiful day. All right, next on the list, we're in Tualatin. Oh, let me get that sun out of my face a little bit. Tualatin's a little bit of a hidden gem. I mean, it's further south of Portland. 
uh, you know, maybe like eight miles south of downtown Portland. Um, there's 28,000 people here. It's eight square miles, so much smaller than a Beaverton, a Hillsboro, um, quite a bit smaller than Tigard as well. Um, definitely has a very suburban feel. There's not like an old downtown area like some of the other um, suburbs of Portland have when they were their own like standalone towns. Uh, Tualatin was really, you know, um, you know, before it blew up into what it is today, uh, really just like a truck stop on I-5. So Tualatin has grown a ton. There's a ton of uh, development, you know, that's happened over the last 25, 30 years. Um, there's some older neighborhoods too, some kind of mid-century homes. You're, you're not getting a ton of, uh, you know, homes that were built you know, prior to the 1960s, 1950s, um, you, you know, you have a lot of areas surrounding Tualatin that are pretty rural. So this was once, um, you know, kind of in recent history, a pretty rural area. Um, but now, I mean, it is suburbia to the max, I would say, and I don't say that in a negative way. Um, Tualatin has a really good feel. I mean, it's, it's, it's hilly, um, you know, it, it's like kind of rolling hills. Um, you know, it's, it's not just on a grid, you know where where every neighborhood is you know um just you know streets going north south streets going east west um you know there, there's a lot of kind of winding streets and you know the way things come together it just has a lot of character um there's a lot of great parks um there is kind of a common area um in town which is like right next to i-5 pretty much so you know that's where you have the the lake at the commons that's where you have some of your big box stores your grocery stores um and some bars and restaurants and things like that so you know i wouldn't say there's much of a nightlife in tualatin uh, but there are some bars and things like that there is though a uh a bar called Bushwhackers, which is like a country and Western bar. It's like a honky tonk. And I mean, you step into that place, you feel like you're in Texas, um, which if you're in Texas, you know, um, not really. I know you guys have, you know, uh, you know, the best honky tonks, but um, Bushwhackers is, is crazy. It's, uh, you know, they, they do line dancing, they do line dancing classes. Um, you know, it's like everyone there is drinking like Budweiser. Um, they do uh, the national anthem every night at 10 p.m., I think it is. So um, it's pretty cool. And it's like right in kind of the main area of Tualatin. But surrounding that area, you just have a, a bunch of different neighborhoods. Um, and, there, you know, a lot of these neighborhoods in Tualatin feel very similar. You know, some are, you know, 25, 30 years old, um, 35 years old. Some are like 15, 20 years old. Some are five, 10 years old. And then you have some new construction as well. Um, there's one high school here. Um, it's a newer, uh, the high school uh, was recently redone. When I say recently, like 15, 20 years ago. Uh, but compared to some of the high schools, like in Portland, for example, um, you know, in some of the high schools that were built 50, 60 years ago, um, it's super nice. And yeah, I mean, overall, uh, Tualatin um, has a lot to offer. You know, if you're looking for more of a suburban feel, I mean, check this out. We're here at, we're here at Ibach Park. Um, and, and there's a bunch of houses and neighborhoods surrounding the park, but you have a playground off that way um, kind of a big open field big open field over there tennis courts you know they're they're gonna do like softball games and you know little league games and things like that here um, they, they do music in the park in the summer actually my uncle's in a uh, like a little local band and I came here last summer to see music in the park and this whole field was you know just filled with people blankets um, you know, lawn chairs, and then there was a stage kind of oh, right over in that direction. So pretty cool. Um, yeah, Tualatin's great. And, uh, you know, you, you have you have Tigard uh, just to the north, and then to the south, you have kind of Wilsonville, Sherwood. Um, to, to the east, you have uh, like Stafford area and some parts of Lake Oswego and then West Lynn. Um, but, a lot of area in between that is pretty rural. And then um, a lot of the areas to the south um, and to the west as well are pretty rural too. So, you know, 
you, you have a lot of rural area. I mean, you can kind of live in this very suburban area, you know, pretty close to downtown Portland, but you can drive five minutes uh, away from here and, you know, be out in the country. So, you know, definitely a lot more privacy in that way. Definitely less urban, you know, so you see a lot less of, uh, you know, just kind of the traffic and, you know, uh, you don't see a lot of homeless people, things like that. So, um, no, this is a great area to live. Let's see what's next. Another thing about Tualatin is you have Bridgeport Village, which is a newer open air mall. Um, and it's incredible. I mean, it doesn't really fit uh, the climate, you know, the weather around these parts because, you know, it can be cold uh, a lot of the months out of the year. And obviously we get a lot, a lot of rain at times. So, um, but it, you know, it's, it's kind of a little bougie, um, you know, uh, outdoor mall, you know, with some kind of higher end stores and a really cool movie theater. And that's kind of the Northern part of Tualatin. It's really actually where like Tualatin, Tigard and Lake Oswego intersect. Um, but it's all basically in Tualatin, but, um, that's, that's a pretty cool spot, uh, for sure. And then, um, you know, I was talking about some of the rural areas that are kind of within Tualatin proper. Um, there's like pumpkin patches and Christmas tree farms. So, I mean, you can drive like five, 10 minutes if you live in Tualatin and, you know, say during Christmas, for example, go get your Christmas tree or in the fall, there's like Lee farms. Um, I go there every year with, uh, my family and, you know, we do the hay ride, we get our pumpkins, you know, we get, um, you know, caramel, uh, co covered apples, apple cider. I mean, all the good stuff and it's huge and it's, you know, there's a ton of people there. Uh, it's a great time. So yeah, I mean, I would say Twalton, it's definitely one of the top suburbs in the Portland area. All right. Well, there's a lot you could say about Sherwood, uh, which is where I'm at now. I mean, um, it's pretty far away from downtown Portland. It's kind of the furthest southwest you get in the Portland metro area. And it's definitely a place that is right up against that urban growth boundary. So Highway 99 runs right through it. And um, if you don't know, Highway 99 uh, was kind of what uh, was the original I-5. So 99 runs actually all the way up. Um, you know, through Seattle, it might go south through California too. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, but um, so Highway 99 um, kind of goes through uh, Tigard, uh, just north of Sherwood, and then Tualatin is north of Sherwood as well, um, and then kind of south, uh, closer to I-5 of Sherwood is Wilsonville, but really due west, uh, kind of just north too, but also to the south. It's like very rural. It's all farmland. Um, there's about 20,000 people in Sherwood, but there's some areas that feel, um, you know, like very densely populated. So a lot of newer developments, a lot of new construction and development that has kind of gone on in the last 15 or 20 years. Um, you know, which homes like that, usually the lots are pretty small, like kind of as small as the builders can make them basically. But, um, you know, it's like, you know, a, a lot of these new builds, they're just trying to maximize the efficiency of the lots that they have to build on. Um, and so it just kind of comes with the territory. But, you know, I, I guess for Sherwood, you know, especially with all of the new homes, new development that's there, um, you might have some smaller lots, but again, you can get out in the country real quick, kind of in any direction. Um, and there's parks, uh, plus the downtown area is really cool. I mean, you know, at a time, you know, like a hundred years ago, Sherwood was like this little tiny standalone town um, that kind of, you know, expanded out in particular to the north and to the east. Um, and then, you know, the Portland metro area kind of grew into it as well. So um, again, you have kind of tw that Tualatin area and then Tigard um, meeting uh, Sherwood, um, in particular, up and down Highway 99. Uh, median home price is about 550. Um, so 
that 550 is actually for like Tualatin, Sherwood, Wilsonville. Um, that's, you know, classified um, kind of as one area for real estate sales um, in, in terms of uh, the local MLS. Um, so about 550, but you do have some larger homes. So probably, you know, you might find, um, you know, a, a similar median sale price to like an area like Tiger Tualatin, but you might have a lower cost per square foot. So your, your dollar might actually go a little bit further in a place like Sherwood. Um, you know, generally, like we always say, the rule of thumb is the further away you get from uh, kind of Portland proper, downtown Portland, um, the less expensive it gets. And, you know, th you know that certainly applies in a, in a place like Sherwood. Um, there's a brand new high school and it's probably the most, if not like top two, top three, most beautiful high schools in the Portland metro area. Um, it's like surrounded by kind of, you know, rural undeveloped area, um, just, you know, beautiful structure in these rolling hills. Um, it's super nice. Mountainside is the other one, which uh, is like South Beaverton, uh, but is also you know, kind of bumping into that North Sherwood area as well. Um, so yeah, Sherwood is awesome. Um, you know, there, there's, there is some variety, um, but y you have a ton of new development. Um, it's probably, uh, you know, a, a little more conservative. It's more rural. You're going to see more trucks rolling around things like that, but it's an awesome spot. All right, folks, that was Washington County. So as you can see, a lot of diverse landscape, a lot of great areas, a lot of great parks, a lot of things to do, a lot of great houses. So um, if this is an area you're interested in or if you wanna learn more about other parts of the Portland metro area, give us a call, send us a text, shoot us an email, or again, schedule a Zoom call in the description below of this video. If you reach out to us, we're gonna be able to talk about your needs, your wants, your lifestyle, where you're gonna work, all of that good stuff, and talk about what areas are gonna fit you best. So we look forward to chatting with you soon and really appreciate you watching the video. Um, if this was helpful, make sure to hit the subscribe button, give it a like, hit the bell to make sure you get notified when we drop a new video. And until next time, we'll talk to you later.